Hello, um, in this video we are going to discuss uh, writing and later reading from CSV using some different methods. We'll start with the very basic of writing text and then we'll use some more advanced classes that exist out there. So let's say that we need to export all of our customers to CSV. The most basic example would work like this. I'll add a new item. I'll choose a business process. I'll call it export customers. To CSV. Okay. Next thing I want to do, I want to generate. I want to use the uh, file writer. So I'll say env io file writer, and I'll create it saying writer equals new file writer, and I'll give it a path c temp txt. Okay. Normally this is done in the onload method, so I'll just move it there. For consistency, consistency sake, and also do streams dot add writer, which will make sure that the uh, file will be closed when the controller is complete, when the business process is complete. Next, let's say um, models customers. We we'll set it as the main table of this controller. And only row writer dot write line and just put customers dot I don't know customer ID. Let's start with that. Now to quickly test this, I will run it on the on start of the application. So I'll say override on start. New export customers to CSV. Okay, so now in the CTEMP directory, I will have the xx.txt which I'll send to Textpad, and you can see that it has the customer IDs. Cool. Now let's try to make that into a CSV. And we'll go over here. Let's just we're oh, using version control, so let's use version control to maintain the changes. And let's say that I want to write customer ID plus comma plus customers dot company name plus comma plus customer dot contact name. And when I run this we can see the results appearing. So this is the very basic way of writing CSV, and it can be slightly changed by using uh, something like a uh, string format instead, saying string format, first column, comma, second column, comma, third column, and then define the column that I want to use. I think this is what we show in the original blog uh, entry. Cool. Let's run this. Voila. So far so good. Now this is a very basic way of writing um, CSV items, but still too much work, too much subtleties, and CSV is actually way more complex than that. You have to deal with the separator within your values, what do you do when you have extreme cases, and all sorts of those complexities. So we've done all of that, and we have a prepared class designed to help you do that, which we, you can use. We'll later do another video on how we wrote that class, and how we used uh, test-driven development to write it. But let's first of all start by using it. Um, in the env io namespace, there are two new classes called separated builder and separated reader. Separated Builder is in charge of writing the CSV, and Separated Reader is in charge of reading it. We'll discuss how to do that a bit later. Uh, but you can use each and every one of them to see and work and operate on the things that you want. Um, if you don't have the code for them, simply contact us and we'll be happy to send it to you. So let's see how we use them. So I'll say here var sb equals new separated in the io separated builder. Okay, I can send parameters to it, I can ignore the parameters to it, whatever I like, and 
then I can say, okay, separated builder, add customers dot customer. Oh, just a second before we do that, version control. So we can later see the changes. And then we can say var sb equals new separated, uh, new env io separate builder. And I can simply send it the columns that I wanted to write. And then say sb, oh sorry, writer dot write line sb dot two string. I think. Have a look. Yeah, seems about right. So let's run this now. And we can see the results that we got. Okay? Looks exactly the same, but it's actually a bit smarter because if we now go to the customers and add a comma in the customer's name, which would normally break any CSV writer, over here we can see that this one actually handles that. So if we run it again, we look at the text and we can see that it was adjusted to accommodate a comma by adding a quotes on the site. And for those of us who like challenges, we can then say that we have also quotes in the text. And we can see that it also adjusts for that. So not only is it extremely fast and efficient, it also takes care of many extreme cases that we don't want to take care of when we are writing CSV. Transparently. So that's fine. Next thing we want to do uh, is we want to show you a bit more ways of using it. So let's go back to running uh, textpad and uh, the C ten xx dot txt. Here's our file. Great. Let's say we want to change the separator. All we need to do is say curly parakets separator and give us a different separator. So now when we run it, textpad will show us the different separator. Also notice how this text has adjusted because not comma or, or quotes is a problem anymore. So that's one thing you can do with it. Another thing you can do with it is go ahead and add more columns. You can add them like this as an array, or you can add them as you operate. You can say sv add customers dot um, phone, and it will add it up. Okay, so you don't have to send it all in an array. When, to begin with, you can actually put something wherever you want it. Another way to set columns is by choosing their numbers. So we have something at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Is it 0 based or 1 based? No, 0 based. 0 based. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's say we want something to be on column 5, just because of the design or the specs that we got. So instead of having to remember that, we can just say SB column 5 and put there the customer, the values that you want to put in. So let's put the uh, postal code. Okay, and in this case, when we run it now, we will see that it added extra separators as much as required to reach the number 5. So we have um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Another requirement that we often get with CSVs is they are consumed by Excel, so a lot of times the user want to view them as Excel cells, and they'll give you the spec in an Excel cell format. So instead of saying SB5, you can say SBG and put something there. The letters resemble the column lettering way of Excel, and it will just work. Okay, now I've said G, and my alphabet is not as good as I remember, so MCD of G, H, I, J, just for the fun of it. So we can see them in... I close the text field again. So we can see that the columns is required. So now when we need to write a CSV, we can do it a simple way, but we can use these classes to write it in a way that is well formatted and maintains data integrity when we use special characters and stuff like that. It will also allow us to easily manage the columns just by saying where they are, where they're used, and you, we can approach the columns by using either a sequential approach of adding them, 
like the array or the add, an index-based approach or a letter-based approach that matches the way Excel looks at them. Okay, so we recommend using the separate builder to write CSVs. We think it makes life easier. Now let's go have a look at the separated reader. And just like there's a separated writer, there's a separated reader, which can read strings and give them to us in a way that it's easy for us to read. Um, let's do just a, create a basic way of reading files, and let's go completely basic. Let's just write some code that reads files. Let's say, add new item, code, class, my file, reader, my reader, demo. Let's of course save everything so we can save the changes. And we say public static void read file. And we say using env io a file reader. And we'll give it the name of the file that we want to read. Okay. And while not, did we use it with that? I don't remember. Let's use a basic even Microsoft Reader that makes it even easier. System IO Stream Reader. String line while line equals read line is different than null. It's the basic template of reading text which you see on any dotnet website and we'll start by reading the line itself we'll see the value of the line let's put a breakpoint here see what we get so i'll go to our application and instead of writing i will call this demo of reading okay and when we reach our breakpoint we can see that the line contains the csv information Okay, and when we scroll through the rows, when we go next, 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 we get to see more and more rows there. Now we need to parse that and get it correctly according to all the formatting rules and again, special characters and everything. And to handle that, um, actually, you know, before we do that, I want to show you the basic way of doing it. And then we'll use our uh, class that we have there. If I were to write this from scratch and I needed to invent the wheel, uh, there's actually a great function for Microsoft to split it into an array. Where I can say um, var split equals line dot split and give it the separator. Okay. When I do that, okay, break over here, split will have an array that contains all the different elements. Okay, according to the separator. Those of you who come for magic, this should remind you of uh, STR token in some cases, and split is the implementation behind STR token. But you can see how it does that. But what it doesn't do, it doesn't take care of special character cases. You know, when you have a, a semicolon within the text or stuff like that that we've handled with the special classes, and that is a huge headache when you start reading text files. So um, we're going to take care of that by using the separated reader. So we'll go ahead and say, um, var separated reader separated reader which receives the parameter a line and the separator which is in our case semicolon okay let's see what we get from that the separated reader okay has and uh, shows me the line he has different values in it and I can see that it has these two and these two, and to figure out what I missed over there, if anything. And I can do SR0, SR1. I'm kind of curious what we've missed. And I can do SRA and SRP. Now, obviously, something we've missed here, because obviously something is going not as we expected it, so we'll have a look at it and examine it and issue a new version of that code to show it. But the idea here is that you should make reading uh, CSVs or writing CSVs this simple. Just one line of code that you can play with 
so it gets the job done for you. Okay, so just to continue where we stood a second earlier, we could see that the separator didn't actually do what we wanted it to do. And when we look at the SR line, we can see that it actually split it in the comma instead of using the semicolon that we wanted it to use as a separator. So while we're having fun, let's go and fix it. We'll go to the separator reader. We see that it receives a separator parameter that actually does nothing with it. So what we should say then is whenever we use the comma over here, we should use the separator. And since uh, he's not going to be nice enough to allow me to do case separator, we're actually going to put it in the default saying if i is separator, then do this. Else do this. And hopefully. This will fix the little bug we had. Let's have a look. Yes, so SR0 is this and SR1 is that. And SR with all the values will show us all the values in it as we wanted it to show. So after recovering from that little bug that we had, this is how you can see, you can write CSV very easily and you can read CSV very easily, uh, abiding to all the different special character rules and complexities. Um, as said earlier, feel free to contact us if you want the code for this or if you don't already have it. Cheers!